Hey, 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 this is Brad Buckner. And you know what? I get asked all the time, how do you sharpen a tonneau blade? So you've got a straight line here and drops off at about a 45. So let's pick, uh, you know, brand new product. Ooh, that is like brand new, not even used. Okay, I hate to put a scratch on it. But guess what? We're going to turn here and maybe get in some of the sun here so I'm not in my own shadow. All right, so what we have... We have two corners, 90 degrees. There's 90 degree corner right there, 90 degree corner right there. Those corners are made out of tungsten carbide. I'm gonna call it the hardest metal on earth. I get some debate about that, but I'm gonna call it the hardest metal on earth. Okay, then we also have a bottle opener, all right? We do have the open face straight line. We've got the V-notch for restructuring the blades and kitchen knives, slide it through there gentle. If you uh, are real gentle with it, you can slide your pocket knife through there. Of course, you don't put a $700 pocket knife through there. $20 knives, you just want to tune them up. You can run them through there. I'm not a real advocate of the V-notch. Okay, so what do we have in here? Man, we have a new, I don't get to see the, the new ones very often. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna scratch some of the coating off. And then with the wind blowing like it is, there's the fire starters. Okay, so we have a survival tool. We have a bottle opener. We have the two styles of sharpening. So how do we sharpen? Uh, first, I got to remember to get out my Denver magazine. And oh, yep, this is one we've been using. Page is torn out. So let's get the same page and keep using it. I'm going to tear it in half so the wind doesn't mess with me quite so much. Okay. And this is brand new. Okay. It's not been used. So it, it might be fairly sharp. A little breeze blowing here. All right, to start with. Oh, it's not. Oop, oh, there it caught. But you have to kind of saw at it and it chafes and tears the paper. So, let's see. I run right down through here like this. Oh, I'm just gonna let you look right straight in at it. I set it down left, slide it right, set it down left, slide it right, set it down left, slide it right, set it down left, slide it right. Pick it up, move it, set it down left, slide it right. And then bump, bump, bump like this right down through the little points. Slow down a little bit so you're actually down in the little holes, down through the rounded hole, the little sharp points like this. Set it down left, slide it right, slide it down through the rounded hole, up over the little points, the rounded hole, okay. And then I just pretty flat, flat as I can get it on the back. And then I turn it a little bit and I start working on the straight part of that blade and then the 45 up here on the tonto. But we'll start back here at this point right there, slide it forwards start back here slide it forwards so just like that don't push too hard let it work don't make it work slide it right on up and off of that first point right there and then start from this point the tonto breakover point going that way slide the sharpener forwards don't press too hard let it work don't make it work i can see the blade changing completely and if i do this and you just lock your eyes on see there's a, a dark line right down the middle between the shine and the shine. That's because this has got a, a little tiny bit of a grind, uh, rounded effect to it down in there. So we just run along like this. Then we start back here, run it forwards, fly right off of that point, and then turn it and go to the very uh, point on the end of the blade there. Don't push too hard, let it work, don't make it work. Just like that. Now I just go out and right off of the point, the tip of the blade, just like this. Turn it over, do the same thing on that side. And now we're going to flip the knife every pass. And right now I'm just polishing. I touch it light and lighter and lighter and real light. Right now I'm just polishing the wire edge off of the blade. So let's see if that little bit of time equals sharper knife, okay? So let, let's just pick it up wherever it goes, you know. Okay, that's definitely better. We're going to have to help it. Just, oops, there it goes. We're going to have to help it just a little bit more. But that's obviously better. It doesn't. You don't have to saw on it quite so hard. So let's uh, do the little rectangular one here. It's about, I don't even know, an inch and three-eighths by two inches, two and an eighth maybe. Uh, and it's also about a quarter of an inch thick. So it's actually very pocketable, fits right in your watch pocket quite well also. Take the 90 degree corners, there's one right there, one right there, tungsten carbide. Slide it down the blade on the corner of the sharpener and then right on around on the cutting edge. 
and turn it over. Go right on out to the point. Don't press too hard, let it work, don't make it work. I'm a little surprised that knife actually wasn't overly sharp. All right, now we're gonna touch it really light. Polish the little wire edge off the blade. And we're gonna quit here in just about 20 seconds. We polish, polish, polish the blade real light. Go out, drop off, right down off the point. Just like that. Now let's see what we got. And it's gonna be about the same thing. That blade actually had a flat spot. It still does, I can see it. I can see the shine on the cutting edge. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little pressure on it, actually cut the blade, instead of being here all day, just like that. Now it's like a machine working on it. And then we're gonna turn it, go down this way. You gotta reprofile the blade from the factory. It actually wasn't sharpened very much at all. I'm kind of surprised. A lot of knives are better than that. Just like this. Back this way. That's getting to look better. You can actually see the flat on some knives. Uh, perhaps two or three thousandths thick. Right on the cutting edge. And I can see that the, uh, the angle fr uh, from the back, the heel to the cutting edge, the toe, is very, very abrupt, so that means it's it's actually a steep angle, and a steep angle is never gonna cut very good. So you have to overcome that if you're gonna actually make a knife that cuts. All right, let's see what we got now. Okay, oop, that's better. That's definitely better. I'm gonna hurry through one more uh, quick sharpening. a little more pressure on it, make it cut a little bit better. Hey, Gabba. And then right on around. And then this way. If you do that with a whetstone, unless it's a super aggressive grit, uh, you're going to be there a very long time. And besides that, having to sharpen with a, uh, a stone of some sort or diamond hone. If it's not a motorized uh, sharpener, uh, like a belt sander or something, you're going to be there quite a while because I'm removing particles big enough that you can actually, I don't know, maybe you can come in close and see the glitter, the little diamond looking dust glitter on the blade. So those are little tiny pieces and uh, whetstones and stuff don't take off little tiny pieces so you be there a very long time. Alright, let's see how this is now. I can't believe that thing is fighting with me that much. Not for crying out loud. Yeah, you can still see flaps on them. I don't know. I've never seen a blade quite like that that was new. I'm going to turn here, and I'm going to run it through the V-notch, and I'm going to reprofile it uh, completely. Stop playing with it and um, show you how I can actually... In the, in the sunlight, you may be able to see the glittery pieces coming off because I'm very much interested just like socks is um, in getting this done yeah socks is uh, I want to see I want to see I want to see what you're doing I want to smell it okay try it again They would have put somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 degrees on each side to start with. Would have been a lot better for me. But you're going to get to see, yes, it will sharpen a dull knife. All right. I keep doing from dull to sharp. People say, why don't you make a video on really dull to sharp? Well, if you go look at my website, there's a bunch of them on there on, on YouTube. Okay, definitely getting better. You don't have to saw at it like I was, but we still, and that's actually getting pretty good. It catches 
fairly good. I'm gonna have to do it again because I'm not satisfied yet. I didn't think this was gonna be a 10 minute video. But when you get handed a knife and I don't look at it, I don't prep, I don't think this through, I don't open them up and look at them, uh, just do it, you know. That's what I've said for how long now. Don't prep the video, just do it. So obviously I couldn't be taking off, a lot of people say, oh man, that takes off so much metal, don't do that. Well, obviously I can't be taking off very much or it wouldn't have taken this long to cut the knife down to uh, where it cuts, you know, slices. I got some knives in my car that slice. <laughs> They're the ones that I take to the shows all the time. All right, let's see. And you know, with the way the world's going right now, I hate to say it and I'm not alarmist, but uh, things can get pretty damn uh, strange pretty fast. And actually, until I get this one tapered back a lot more than what it is right now, it may never slice quite right because the angle on the blade is way off. But let's see. Well, it's still, that's not right. That's better. All right, let's do it one more time. Got to get this done. Get here over here in the sun. No, I'm not going to slice my leg. A Democrat-ish type person might, but I'm not going to. So let's carve it down. Now, if I had a belt sander, I would use it. I wouldn't do this. I do this only because I have nothing else to work with. As you may find out in the woods, uh, emergency situation, uh, at work, whatever, and you gotta get something done, uh, use my little sharpener, put an edge back on the blade, get on with life. That bites. So let's see. And then I'm going to hold really still, let you look at the blade close up, and you can look and see if you can tell any damage as people say oh my god it ruined my blade it ruined my knife it ruined the cutting edge oh and i've been carving on this thing pretty hard so i'm going to stop here in a second and hold still and let you really look at what i've done here okay i'm going to hold still Obviously, it doesn't look too bad. All right, let's see. Okay, obviously that's getting much better, including the, the tip there. I'm gonna do it one more time since we're getting really close, okay? And I'm gonna carve on it with the straight line open face. I can see that the knife is actually cutting pieces off of the sharpener, the plastic. There is a certain amount of plastic that's kind of sticking out there in the way that you will have to sort of deal with over a period of time. It will cut the plastic off just like that. Turn it over. Come back this way. Back this way. Back this way. I was just down at the Rattlesnake Roundup in Sweetwater, Texas. A lot of repeat business, repeat customers down there. A lot of new people buying sharpeners. Did well, pretty happy. It rained from Ab uh, Ab Abilene? Yeah, from Abilene down to Sweetwater, 300 miles. From Sweetwater back up to Abilene, 300 miles, it rained. It was foggy, it was rainy. 
But that didn't damper things too much. The Texans came out anyway and enjoyed the time. Okay, that's obviously much better than it was uh, when I first started. Oops, tore the paper. <laughs> the wind's gonna make havoc with me here. All right, now I'm gonna hold still again, take one more look at it. I can make it even sharper, but there's really no need. Why do you need a knife sharper than as sharp as you need it? If it's sharper than you need it, that only means that the blade is thinner and you're gonna take the edge off faster. So in a way, you're actually damaging your own knife by sharpening it past what you actually need for sharp, okay? If you're in a uh, contest of bragging rights and all that stuff, and you wanna prove to people how sharp you can make something, just remember this, thinner means not tough. Not tough means it goes dull faster. You can nick it, you can bend it. There's all kinds of things you can do to the little teeny tiny super thin edge that made the knife sharp. This is Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. And you better go to sharpensbest.com, check it out and get your sharpeners today while you can. We'll talk to you later. Bye.